Here, I'm going to show you how to make a simple data input form for any table in your workbook. And the form looks like this, where we have a nice visual way to go through our data. We can search through it. We can add new records very easily and tab through inputting the values. When we're finished, hit enter. We can also delete records. So if I go back here and hit delete and OK, the record is now gone from the table over here. This makes it much easier to go through your table, add data, check data, update data, delete data, than just going through it like this because the table can be much bigger than just this tiny little guy right here. And searching through it using that interface is a really helpful thing I'm going to show you as well. And this requires no VBA. So we can get to it with this little button I'll show you how to add in a moment. No programming required or a little bit of code that I'll show you how to use for this button right here so it makes it much easier to get to the table while in the worksheet. And even though we're not using VBA here, I'm still showing you how to automate your worksheet, which will make your life much easier. But if you want to automate it even more and save yourself hours of time and go from beginner or intermediate level all the way to expert for VBA and macros, check out my full VBA tutorial. I've got a link to it below this video. But now let me show you how to make this work. So all this is is a regular data table. I showed you how to make this entire setup last week. Check that tutorial if you want to make this great visual interface for filtering and going through your data, including the formulas up here. But once you have the table itself, you're then ready to get the data input form working. And if you don't know what a table is, I'm going to very quickly bring back the grid lines and make one for you. Let's say this one is color and number green is one red is two so this is a little tiny table but not technically a table we can click in here and hit control t or go to insert table and okay and now we have a table that gives us access to lots of helpful features including the data input form and once you've got your table, you are ready to go. One thing I'm going to say to make your life a little bit easier, though, is to rename your table. So click inside of your table, go to Table Design, and over here, rename it to something that's descriptive. This is TBL Sales. We are going to be referencing that to get this little button to work over here. But now let me show you how to get the data input form because it's not very intuitive. We cannot get to this guy anywhere in the ribbon. It is a hidden command. So we must add it somewhere. Here I've added it right up here to the quick access toolbar. So I click in my table, I click the button, and we get this window. If you don't have that already, click the drop down arrow up here and go to more commands. Here on the left, click the drop down arrow, and it is off the screen of course, but the very second option is commands not in the ribbon. Click that. And we're going to get a bunch of hidden commands. What we want to do is to go down here to form. And thankfully it's in alphabetical order. And we have a form right here. Click that, hit add. And I've already got it in my quick access toolbar. So that's what that error means. But once you do that, it should be over here and say form, then hit OK. And you'll have that little guy up here. Now all you have to do is click in the table and click the button and you get this. You want to input something into the new little guy over here, click in there, hit the button, and there you go. So now let's talk about how to actually use this window, and then I'll show you how to make this button and give you the VBA code required to make it work. We click in here, click the button, and now we can go through the entire data table. The headers are right here, so the titles for every single column, and then the columns that we can input data into are all right here. There's a maximum of 32 columns. And if your columns have formulas in them, you will not be able to change their value. However, since these don't have formulas, we can go ahead and update their values as we want. I could change this to 6,000, hit enter, and it's going to be updated right here. Deckard is now 6,000, and we're on the next record, Roy. And we can go through all of the records in the table by going like this, clicking down here, or up here, or grabbing this and scrolling up and down, or by going to find previous and find next. 
And we can even search through the table. I'll show you how to do that in just a moment when we click the criteria button right here. But let's go ahead and add a new record. This is so easy. Even if you have a totals row down here, all we do is we click new. Then we can go ahead and input the new values and you hit tab to go to the next fields. And when you're finished, just hit enter. So it makes it so that you can input the new values very, very quickly. And if you want to delete the record, well, let's go back up to Thanos. Just view the record, go to delete, hit OK, and the record is gone. And before we search through the records, let me show you how to back something up. So let's say you're here in Roy and you accidentally hit backspace and you're going down and you say, hey, wait, 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 wait. I did this wrong. I did not mean to delete anything. Hit restore, but do it before you go to the next record. Then it's going to put all of the values that were there when you first got to this record just a moment ago. And that's pretty much it for the basics of using this window. It is a very helpful visual interface for inputting and deleting data from here. But when you have a lot of data, you're going to want to search through it. So let's say that we want all of the January records that are how about greater than 8,000. So we can go over here to our little criteria button, click this, it's going to clear everything out, look a little bit creepy. You say, oh my gosh, did I delete any data? No, you didn't. Look up here, it says criteria. If I now click the button which says form, which was the criteria button, this will give you a list of the number of records. You're on record two of six. So we go back to criteria, see criteria, know you're safe to input it, and we want January greater than 8,000. So greater than 8,000. Then hit find next or find previous, or go to form. Then hit find next or find previous. And what you're going to see now are only the records where January is greater than 8,000. So Tyrell, Pris, Roy, and that's it. We go back to criteria and we can delete this and then back here and we can go through all of the records once again, even below 8,000. It might not be as nice as visually filtering over here, but it can be very helpful and we can use it for names as well. So let's say that you only want the names that begin with S. We could go to criteria and we could type S and then find next. And we have Shapiro and nothing else below that, Sefton, and that's it. Now what if you want a record that has an S anywhere in it? So Shapiro, Sefton, and Pris. Well, we go back to criteria and we could put an asterisk at the end and an asterisk at the beginning. A wildcard character that says, hey, I don't care where you find the S, just find one. We get Shapiro, Sefton, and Pris. And just like we used the less than symbol for the criteria a moment ago for January, you could use the greater than here as well. So let's say we want to go for a second option. How about greater than 5,000? Greater than five, one, two, three. Now we should only get Pris and Sefton, not Shapiro. We have Sefton, we have Pris, we have no more. So you can use greater than, less than, you can use the asterisk, you can use a few of those wildcard characters, but the moment that it gets a little too confusing or hard to manage, and all you wanna do is to edit a currently existing record, go down here and use these options here, which are of course off the screen, but they provide you many, many, many filtering options and sorting options, and they are very easy to use. So from my perspective, I pretty much like to use this form when I wanna input or delete data very easily, especially if I have a total row down here. But now let me show you how to make this little button. So first the button itself is very easy. Insert, illustrations, shapes, and of course it's off screen, rounded rectangle. It should be close to the top row. Draw your rectangle. Type update table, home, center that guy, and you've pretty much got a nice little button. Now we have to make the code behind the button. So let's hit Alt F11 to go to the VBA window, and we can go to Insert, Module, and you're going to get a blank module like this, and the code that you need for it is right here. 
I'm not going to write it from scratch, but I am going to tell you what you need to change for your data. So uh, this is the macro, and you can download this file from teachexcel.com. If you're taking my full VBA course, everything here is something you already know. The only thing that you have to figure out is how to show the sneaky little data form. But let's go from top to bottom real quick. Once you get this code into your workbook, what you need to do is to change this to the name of the worksheet that contains the table that you want to reference. If we go back here, sales is this worksheet. And remember when I told you to change the name of the table, we reference that name right here, TBL sales. That's the name of the table that we want to work with. And after you change those two things, you are good to go. You do not need to change anything else in this code. And you can pause the screen and type the code out here or download the file that's going to include all of the descriptions with it. And once you have that, let's go back here. You right click, assign a macro, click the macro, okay, click away, click it again, and there you go. You want to change it to this table over here, which we have not renamed. Well, we first still need the name, so click in here, go to table design, and it is table two. <laughs> very descriptive. It's going to be very easy to see what that is in your code, of course. <laughs> so let's replace TBL sales with table two. And then we can go back here, click the button, and we're now working with that tiny table. And that is all that you need to know for this. But if you want to learn how that VBA code works, or at least what's going on with it, I'm going to tell you right now. So let's close this and hit Alt F11. And let's go back up here. If VBA is completely new to you, I highly recommend you check out my full course. I take you all the way from beginner to expert with over 200 tutorials, all the code and downloadable files heavily commented. You can follow everything every step of the way until you know exactly what's going on and you can automate your own workbooks. So for here, what we have are just some basic variables up here. The only new one you might not have seen is the name type, and that's how we work with named ranges in workbooks. Then we make a worksheet reference where the table is. Then we make a table range reference using the name of the table. That's what list objects is going to get us. Then we need to make a named range called database, specifically database. It's a bit finicky with different versions of Excel, but this seems to be a very robust way of doing this. So we have to use this name. Then what we want to do is to take the full table range and give it a name. This name right here, database. Then we use the show data form method on the worksheet where our table is located. And this is what actually makes the little input form appear. After that, we loop through all the named ranges in the workbook and delete the new one that we created, database. And the reason we have to do that is otherwise, what will happen is that when we click this button up here, it will only show us the last input form that we made appear. So if we made the input form for this table appear, even if we click in here, when we go here, it will show the input form for the other table if we have not deleted the database name. That is very annoying, <laughs> but if you don't pay attention to that, if you don't have this little bit of code right here, you're going to have issues in the future and it can take you forever to debug them. If you want to play around with that, comment these out, run this code, and you'll see exactly what I mean. But for this tutorial, we are now officially 100% finished. You know how to make that little data input form appear for whatever table you want it to appear for. You know how to use it. You know how to search through it, add records, delete records, and you now know how to add a little button like this to show the input form for whatever table you want to show it for. And that's all there is for this tutorial. If you liked it, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you can get all of my new tutorials. And check the description of this video for helpful links, including to my full VBA course.